Nos acompaña en vivo y en directo el abogado estadounidense, socio legal y ex presentador también de radio y televisión en los Estados Unidos, Mateo. Saludamos al abogado Alan Scott hoy y le damos la bienvenida a Contra Reloj. Uh, Mr. Bolden, thank you so much for being here with us in the radio station in Colombia. Mr. Bolden, can you hear me? Yes, I'm here. Oh, great. Uh, thank you so much for attending us. Bueno, es un analista político legal, frecuentemente ha aparecido en los principales canales de noticias locales, nacionales, incluido CNN, Fox News, MS, MSNBC, Fox Business Network, en fin, es toda una autoridad. Ahora, la pregunta, la primera, la primera pregunta, Mateo, sería, ¿cuál es el recurso que tiene en este momento el expresidente de los Estados Unidos, Donald Trump, después de estos 34 cargos? Uh... Mr. Bolden, as first question, we'd like to know and understand what would be the, the resource that maybe uh, former President Donald Trump has after these 34 charges that he has been accused of. I'm sorry, I didn't hear the question. One more time. Don't you worry. So we want to know and understand what are the resources that the former President Donald Trump has after being accused of these 34 charges. Well, his resources to defend himself would come from his own personal resources or personal wealth. He's got a great criminal defense trial team. Uh, I think there were three lawyers at the table with him today, but he would have to finance his own defense. Uh, the other way he could finance his uh, criminal defense is through political contributions because he would argue that these are politically trumped up charges and but for him running for president or being a Republican former president, these charges would never have been brought. He could actually raise money from his supporters who would give to an independent PAC or to a Trump PAC and they could use those funds to finance his uh, criminal defense. Either way, we have to take a closer look and see what he files with the FEC or if he files something with the FEC. Pues vea, Rosario, dice que pues en este caso serían como recursos personales, ¿no? Estamos hablando en términos de dinero, porque pues de hecho tiene un gran equipo contratado. Hoy estuvo con tres abogados durante este juicio. Entonces dice que pues él, él financiaría su propia defensa, esta defensa criminal. Eh, también se podría hablar de esas contribuciones políticas, pues ya cuando se lance a ser candidato presidencial o en el tema pues ya obviamente pues siendo republicano, que podrían haber salido de ese lugar y usar esos fondos que haya recibido pues en este caso de los contribuyentes o de los simpatizantes para financiar esa defensa criminal y eso es lo que digamos que en cierta manera usaría o pues tendría en cuenta para poder eh, defenderse frente a estos, todos estos cargos. Ahora, Mateo, yo sí quisiera preguntarle si él considera que al final de todo esto es positivo o no para la campaña del expresidente Donald Trump, todo lo que ha sucedido el día de hoy. And Mr. Bolden, would you say that all this thing that has been going on today with this trial is positive or negative? Uh, thinking ahead of his presidential campaign. Well, if you're a Republican, um, Donald Trump is going to raise money of being indicted over 34 counts of uh, business fraud, business record manipulation. Uh, it's certainly the Republicans think it would be positive. Donald Trump thinks it would be positive for him because he fully anticipates being exonerated. The challenge for Donald Trump is... He's going to have to focus on keeping his liberty, if you will. Uh, he and his lawyers are going to have to focus on fully defending him and ensuring that he's not convicted of any of these criminal counts. That's going to be tough because it's going to be a paper case. Either the records were falsified or not. Either he directed people to falsify them or he falsified them. And so as a result, that's a negative for him. He's going to be distracted. With respect to the Democrats, uh, I think the Democrats have mixed feelings. On one hand, I think they were underwhelmed with the indictment because it's focused on Stormy Daniels and Karen McDougal and these hush payments, if you will. To take it out of the political realm, I've been saying for the last two or three re weeks that the 34 uh, counts against Donald Trump had to involve business fraud or financial fraud. Because remember, his company was found guilty of similar business fraud, and then his CFO uh, pled guilty and went to jail over business and financial fraud within the company. And so as a result, 
um, uh, many of us were thinking that this indictment would include more information. It simply didn't. And so now the Democrats have to figure out, one, if Donald Trump's not in the race, can they beat the other Republican candidates? Democrats and Biden will be the Democratic nominee. He certainly could beat Trump. But now it's up in the air, especially if Donald Trump gets out of the race. Pues vea, Rosario, nos dice en este caso, pues que pues si usted es republicano, si son los republicanos, pues dicen pues que obviamente pues Donald Trump pues, va a tener dinero pues para todo este tema de justificar estas que, cuentas y este fraude que, y manipulación de la cual se está hablando lo que está siendo acusado. Entonces lo verían como algo positivo o más bien pensarían de esa manera porque pues de pronto él podría buscar anticipar ser exo exonerado, pero el reto se terminaría siendo enfocarse, en mantener su libertad, pues para eso tiene sus abogados quienes lo van a defender, pero que pues obviamente buscando que no sea condenado de todas estas acusaciones, dice va a ser difícil porque va a ser pues obviamente un tema de papel de revisar todos esos récords si fueron falsificados o si los falsificó a alguien más o si los falsificó él inclusive entonces dice que obviamente va a ser negativo porque va a estar distraído en este tema en, en contraste para los demócratas pues obviamente tiene sentimientos mezclados con todo el tema de Stormy y de Karen McDougall en, y todo este terreno político porque pues son 34 acusaciones de fraude fiscal de fraude financiero que igual le ocurrió a su compañía hace un tiempo con el su CFO que pues se declaró culpable entonces hay un resultado pues que obviamente muy grave en ese sentido entonces pues Ahí empieza a hablar un poco del tema de, de la información de los demócratas y como que, pues, digamos, si él no se presenta, sería un lío porque, pues, ellos, los demócratas, pensarían que podrían derrotar a Donald Trump si él se llegara a presentar a las presidenciales. Pero si él no llegara a hacerlo por esto, si lo encuentran culpable, pues ahí sí el tema sería como, cómo vamos a vencer a otro candidato. Yo tengo una pregunta para el abogado Scott eh, y tiene que ver con la preocupación de los fiscales que expresaron ante el juez Merchan, eh, esa preocupación por las publicaciones de Trump en las redes sociales y, y el que él tenga derecho a esa expresión, a, a, a su expresión pública a través de redes sociales. ¿Qué tanto puede llegar a incendiar al presidente Trump eh, si no hay un límite y no le han dicho que no las puede usar? So, uh, Mr. Bolden, there's, uh, of course, uh, maybe uh, to be worried about the, the attorneys uh, regarding Wes Merchan uh, of the publications in social media of Donald Trump, because regarding his right to, to express himself on social media so publicly, uh, uh, maybe how much he can uh, make a damage, I don't know, to, to influence in this, uh, this thing, it maybe is there no, not no control at the time of his making his statements on social media, how could it affect uh, everything in terms of the uh, voters and everything and the people that it's following this case. Well, the Republican voters who back Donald Trump, the MAGA voters, Make America Great Again voters, uh, love his uh, public comments and his social media uh, uh, rants and raves. Um, the independents and the Democrats in this country probably don't like it very much, but Donald Trump has to be very careful. His lawyers have to be very careful. Donald Trump has gone after the judges, uh, the judges' family, if you will. Uh, he's attacked Alvin Bragg as an animal. And these are the individuals that could be responsible for not only convicting Donald Trump, but also, remember, if he's convicted, there'll be a sentencing phase whereby he will be asking for mercy from the court, be asking that he not be sent to jail. And so if you're going to criticize the judge and the prosecutor, I can guarantee you the prosecutor is going to ask for time if Donald Trump is convicted. And the judge, based on the personal attacks against the judge, uh, is going to be more inclined to give him time uh, than not. Uh, today, the proceeding in court, the arraignment, took a little extra time because there was discussions about his public comments and his public comments that could have a January 6th insurrection effect on the public. And Donald Trump was warned by the judge that his public statements he has to be responsible for and any statements that would suggest protest or violence because he's been indicted would not be tolerated by the court. Very, very important. Um, the other comments that Donald Trump and his lawyers have made, uh, holding a bat to the head of the prosecutor, is not is completely ill-advised, if you will, especially if he is the prosecutor and the judge, literally within their power, can either ask for jail time or sentence him to jail time. That's a real possibility if he's convicted on all 34 counts or multiple counts of this indictment. And so if I were Donald Trump's lawyer, I would be begging him to not only be careful, but to be quiet.
Pues vea, Montoya, nos dice, mm. en este caso que los republicanos obviamente apoyan, pues sí. todo este lema de hacer América grande otra vez, uh -huh. aman sus comentarios, pero por otro lado, los independientes y los demócratas no les gusta mucho, pero que lógicamente sí, Trump debe ser cuidadoso y sus abogados especialmente deben cuidarlo, porque pues obviamente pues ellos van a ir detrás eh, de todos los abogados, de todos los fiscales y su familia, dice, pues obviamente son como unos animales, especialmente Donald Trump. Entonces que pues obviamente todas estas personas van a intentar condenarlo, van a sentenciarlo, obviamente él va a pedir piedad a la corte para que no lo envíen a la cárcel y que lógicamente va a pedir tiempo si es condenado el juez, al final los fiscales se lo van a dar o sea, él dice se van a inclinar más a darle tiempo, entonces obviamente hoy hubo un cierto, un cierto arreglo, tomó menos tiempo porque hubo una discusión con respecto a lo que usted pregunta, a los comentarios públicos de esas insurrecciones públicas a las cuales él llama entonces uh -huh. le advirtieron, le dijeron que ojo como usted se expresa en las redes sociales porque cualquier cosa que usted diga, usted va a ser responsable si termina sugiriendo una protesta dice, no va a ser tolerado entonces obviamente pues ahí entra este tema de los comentarios comentarios, pero que eso obviamente pues eh, el fiscal y lógicamente le va a tener que perrogar y le va a tener que tener pedir, pedir cuidado en este sentido de que no haga estas cosas para que no vayan consecuencias. Yo quisiera en una frase muy corta que él nos intentara describir o analizar algo muy cortito el trabajo histórico que ha demandado hoy para el fiscal Alvin Bragg. Uh, so, if you could please describe us in uh, short words, uh, could you describe and maybe analyze that historic work of the uh, attorney Alvin Bragg? Uh, well, Alvin is a Harvard-trained lawyer. Uh, he's an elected official in a historic office called the Manhattan District Attorney's Office. Uh, they've only had probably four or five district attorneys in the famed office of the Manhattan District Attorney Office. But as I said, he's Harvard trained, he's hard working, he's super smart, and he's fearless in bringing these indictments, uh, this indictment against Donald Trump, the first time it's been done in the history of this country. Well, Mr. Bolden, thank you so much for being here with us in the radio station for making this analysis about the Donald Trump trial. Thank you so much. Thank you. Pues vea, Rosario dice que es un fiscal muy entrenado, que pues eso obviamente es un eh, oficial elegido, pues obviamente esa corte de Manhattan, de esos cuatro o cinco, que trabaja, que eh, siempre es muy inteligente, es muy feroz con respecto a estas acusaciones de Donald Trump. Entonces, pues al final es muy bueno y está detrás de esto.